And there we are. Hello there, this is Lee Spence's Dancing with the Gatekeepers. I am Lee Spence, and yes, I have been real all along. No internet characters for me, real life is more than enough. If you have come across from my website at www.dancingwiththegatekeepers.com, thank you. And if something or someone has sent you in the direction of this video, welcome. By the way, if it looks like I'm looking off to the top or left or right, don't worry, that's just me looking at the auto queue. This series is usually a written blog, but to mark article number 200, and because it is easier to show you my subject this time around, it is time to try something new. If you think this experiment has worked and you would like to see more, please like, subscribe, ring the bell, all the usual stuff, and we'll see where this goes. We'll come to our main subject in a moment, but just in case you were wondering, why is this called Lee Spence's Dancing with the Gatekeepers? Sounds a bit strong, doesn't it? Well, the truth is I once had a dream where I recorded an electronic art rock album titled Lee Spence's Dancing with the Gatekeepers, where one of the tracks apparently had me yelling all they have are words over and over again. The first article in the series, published in May 2016, ended like this. Dancing with the Gatekeepers could sound like a mystical battle of good versus evil, but it is much more positive to me. Taking delight in the challenges life gives you and having fun with those that think they have all the answers. It will be more about me trying to make sense of an issue, why I think the way I do, or why I'm expected to think something, rather than coming to a decision. Ultimately, I want this to be a fun exploration of the stories we tell ourselves. One month later, the UK voted to leave the European Union, and five months after that, Donald Trump was elected President of the United States. Lucky me, so good thing I've also talked about the Futurist Cookbook, Postmodernism, Vaporwave, Dead Shopping Malls, Myra Breckenridge, and Jeremy Beadle. That's not stopping anytime soon. Anyway, calculators. I usually use a song lyric when I write an article, so I will call this one I am madding and subtracting, I'm controlling and composing. Craftwork were never one for lyrics, were they? I am an operator with my pocket calculator. When did you last buy a calculator? When did you last use one? Have you just bought your child a calculator for school? Do you still have the one you used at school? Or do you just use your phone? In the early 1970s, calculators were the first time that the power of computing was made available to everyone, but they had already become a commonplace, even mundane item by the end of that decade, a feat later equaled by smartphones. And yet I can't do without them. I like the idea of having one to hand to calculate those more pressing questions like, what is the speed of sound through custard? And what are my chances of actually winning the lottery? What is more, why buy a stress ball or a fidget spinner when a calculator is literally a load of buttons? No wonder I've built up quite a collection. As you can see, a lot of my collection are scientific calculators of a certain vintage, mainly 1980s and 90s, back when they used to cost a bit more. What I have seen now is that while your standard four function calculators have been ten a penny for decades now, even scientific calculators have reached a level where they can be found as disposable tat. That gives me an idea. <laughs> okay, massive apologies to Stuart Ashen and his great YouTube channel, but this seemed like too good an opportunity to pass up, especially when you've been to Poundland and you've got a scientific calculator for one pound. Now, the one thing which I did see with this one is that I've got a scientific calculator that has the same buttons in the same order, and it is one made by Sharp. So what it leads me to think is that one is a clone of the other. So yep, as you can see there, it's the Sharp EL501X. This cost me about nine pounds and it has pretty much exactly the same functions. So if I see if I can try and get this one open, here we go. And well, for one thing, all you get for a pounds is just a calculator with no instructions. Oh, there we go. Oh, actually, no, we have got some. And I've just knocked the I've just knocked the camera, which is great. Oh blimey, right, can you read those there? My hands are small, so that should give you some scale. Thank you very much for pers for purchasing our electronic calculator. Do you know what? I don't think there's much point in going any further with that one that's too small to read. What is worse, I was able to find the same sort of design, but they wanted three times as much. Again, it looks like it's based on the same sharp design, so there we go. 
but look at that <laughs> that's got to be probably the worst build quality it even looks even looks worse than this and yet this is supposed to be a third of the price I did see that this one has got instructions so I'll just see what's inside this one oh well they can make it a bit bigger so that's good it's all on the same piece of toilet paper here thank you very much for purchasing our electronic calculator actually hang on a minute ah so we know that they're made from the same place but obviously one one of them wants to spend a bit more on their paper I think okay so if I take this one out here it looks ooh, it's a bit horrible there was one of these I did see in the store it was one of those um there wasn't even a pound land it was just one of those cheaper electron well not even electronics I think this was probably the most advanced thing in there but the other one of these I did see uh, that you, that um, sticker was a bit more skewed and yet it was still in the pack oh dear me don't even know what don't even know what this is going to be like turning it on oh it's absolutely fine it's a bloody calculator what do you expect however I want to focus on perhaps the most bizarre calculator of them all it is a financial calculator, so let's bring up some pictures of the City of London, where some people may still be using one over Microsoft Excel. It has been on sale for nearly 40 years now, despite the constant attempts by its producer to make and sell faster, more capable and easier to use machines. You're already ahead of me if you read the title of the video, it's the HP 12C. And here it is again. There are many videos on YouTube that provide tutorials on how this works, so it's a big hello to you if you clicked on this one by accident. I can only apologise. By 1981, HP had already introduced shirt pocket power with the first scientific calculator, the HP 35, in 1972. By the way, I'm only quoting what it said in the manual. Our object in developing the HP 35 was to give you a high precision portable electronic slide rule. We thought you'd like to have something only fictional heroes like James Bond, Walter Mitty or Dick Tracy are supposed to own. Hilarious to read now, but the HP 35 instantly threw away hundreds of years of using slide rules and logarithm tables. General Electric ordered 20,000 of them immediately. By 1981, HP introduced a range of cheaper calculators, codenamed Voyager, all using the same horizontal case. The 10C, 11C and 15C were all scientific calculators of increasing ability, while the 16C was made for computer programmers. Note the ability to change mathematical bases, which I like to use to see what numbers come up. For example, the Book of Revelation states the number of the beast is 666, but in hexadecimal that becomes 29A, or the house number of the beast. In octal it is 1232, the pin number of the beast, while in binary All of the Voyager range, bar the 12C, left the market before the end of the 1980s, overtaken by more capable machines. However, they are very highly sought after. If you can find one under £100, then get it straight away because the average price is nearly £200. While HP needed to make sure that trigonometric functions, reciprocals, exponentials, square root and so on were included on the first scientific calculator, the first financial calculator, the HP 80, would feature functions invented by HP to meet demand for business. The time value of money, amortization of loans, bond prices and yields, accumulated interest rates, mean and standard deviations, past and future dates, days between dates. You didn't need to know why they work, only that they do. No wonder the manual for the 12C includes a disclaimer advising HP takes no responsibility for the answers their machines create or any risk that comes from acting upon the answers. It is also why the manual makes sure you know the basics of financial calculations before telling you how to turn the thing on, on page 16. Taking a look at the 12C, it includes all the usual functions like amortisation of loans, literally how much the payments will cost to kill the loan off, bond prices, depreciation, interest and date calculation. Everything is easy to calculate because the instructions are included on the back. The gold colour distinguishes it from the rest of the Voyager range and confirms it means business. Also, when the heat is on, the metal construction means the calculator will call your face. I will include at this point that HP calculators are famous for their build quality. 
Bill Hewlett, the H in HP, accidentally dropped an HP 35 when demonstrating it to a client, proving such a sensitive piece of machinery could survive being used in everyday life. Meanwhile, a zookeeper wrote to HP explaining their 12C, which they used to work out feed levels, had been accidentally dropped into a bucket and eaten by a hippopotamus. When it was eventually recovered, it worked absolutely fine. You may have noticed there is no equal button. A hallmark of HP calculators is reverse Polish notation, which basically means that you enter your numbers first, then say what you want to do with them. Instead of saying that 3 plus 4 equals 7, you say that you are taking 3 and 4 and adding them together. This is why there are no brackets, you don't need them. You can also stack up to 4 answers, which means that if you want to add this together, you have to do this. 3, enter, 4, plus, 5, enter, 6, plus, multiply, 77. Something you often find on older calculators is the screen blanking out when you press a key or when it is processing an answer. This is due to the speed of the processor. What I haven't seen before is this. For example, if I enter the date I am recording this on, 28th of September 2019, and see what the date is 150 days from now, you get running, running, running. I guess it's better than a blank screen and thinking you broke your device. The serial number of this model means it was made in 1991, which means there had already been a couple of revisions to the original processor due to changes in manufacturing. But what I don't get is this. A faster processor was put in, but it was throttled to the same speed as the original one. Why? If it didn't work in exactly the same way as the previous versions, would it be less trustworthy? Possibly. Business has different priorities from maths and science, and if you're a company like Goldman Sachs, which used to give every new employee a 12C, you want everything to work in the way you expect, even if you have to make it worse. In 2003, HP introduced the 12C Platinum. Not silver, platinum, platinum. You now have the option of an equal button, you now have brackets, and a modern ARM processor replaces the original HP Nut, a very modern machine. However, you can still buy the original. Spreadsheets should have taken over financial calculators entirely by now, but like scientific calculators, you still need them for education, and you still need them for exams. Only four calculators are permitted for use in Chartered Financial Analyst and Chartered Management Accountant exams, and the 12C and 12C Platinum are two of them. The other two are by Texas Instruments, their BA2 Plus and the BA2 Professional. They cover all the main functions and nothing more. No shortcuts, no fancy menus. They have been the go-to devices for so long, there is little point in buying or making anything else, or buying and making anything better. Incidentally, both HP and TI's financial calculators are made for them now, by a company based in Taiwan. Kinpo Electronics also produce calculators for Casio and Canon. The old calculator arms race must be over if they are all coming from the same place. I should explain that, the early years of calculators really was a race. Texas Instruments created the first prototype for a four-function calculator, known as the Caltech Prototype, in 1967, but like the production version they made with Canon, the Pocketronic of 1969, they used a paper tape to display the results. Sharp were the first to use an electronic display on their EL8 in 1971, but once TI started making their processors available to buy, and once they started selling their own calculators in 1973, the prices of machines crashed, from hundreds of pounds in 1970 to under £10 five years later. Trying to undercut TI, other calculator makers like Commodore started buying up companies that made their own chips. In Commodore's case, buying one company, MOS Technology, brought them into contact with the engineer Chuck Peddle, who told them to get into making computers instead, as calculators will become a dead end. The first Commodore computer, the PET, appeared in 1977, and the MOS 6502 processor found in it can also be found in the Commodore VIC-20 and 64, the Apple II, the BBC Micro, the Atari 2600, the Acorn Electron, and some game machine produced by Nintendo. Texas Instruments ultimately failed at home computers, but did invent the speak and spell. Where are calculators now? If you live in the UK, calculators are made by Casio and that's about it. 
If you live in the United States, you could say the same with Texas Instruments. If you want a scientific calculator, it will most likely have the words natural display or class with written on it because the focus is on education and how equations work rather than just entering the numbers. At the same time, the graphing calculator is the last major calculator battle between Casio, HP and Texas Instruments. Honestly, there just aren't enough buttons on that. What is the best calculator to buy? Obviously, it depends on what you need. There is a reason why Casio and TI are the best known brands and it is because they are the most comprehensive, the easiest to use and they are what everyone else has. I honestly think the Casio FX991EX Classwiz is the best, most comprehensive calculator on sale today and has been made to be perfect for GCSE and A-level students. But my favourite calculator to use? How about the one so perfect that no one wants to let it go? Thank you for listening and watching. Again, if you would like to see more, please like, subscribe or ring the bell. In the meantime, the nostalgia of culture crisis continues every week at www.dancingwiththegatekeepers.com.